Welcome to the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions, now in its 26th season. Our panel features a longtime Penn State media and Nitwits tag team. Neil Verdell of the Altoona Mirror and Mark Brennan of Lions 24-7 with Fight on State. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ's Andrew Clay, and each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Solani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Brent Hogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you. By Novacare, Altoona and State College, the power of physical therapy. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs, candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Harry's Construction, if you can dream it, we can create it. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. It's a bye week for Penn State football, but that doesn't mean there isn't plenty to talk about. Neil and Mark are in the house, and we'll dive into the first half of the season on this week's Nittany Nation Overtime. Let's go. Hey, what I'm doing? Hey, getting right to it. Yeah, the money is talking, I'm flowing, it's coming in just how I drew it. Yeah, you know what it is. Hey, we doing it big. Look up. It's the bye week edition of Nittany Nation Overtime. I'm Andrew Clay, Mark Brennan, Neil Riddell, and Ryan Risky, your nitwit crew of the week. Penn State will play UMass coming up next weekend. We'll talk a whisker about that coming up later in the show. But bye week means it's time to, uh, as they say, self-scout, gentlemen. Uh, and let's talk about the coordinators. Let's start there. Coordinators spoke this week. It's the first time all season since before the year that we got to talk to all of the coordinators. What was everyone's reaction to what we heard from, from those gentlemen? Well, I think all those availabilities are, are good. It gives you a little bit of a snapshot in, um, you know, those guys don't get that many opportunities. Some of the questions that come to them, you wouldn't necessarily ask James, but hey, they're undefeated. Everybody's in good spirits. I think everybody's very impressed, uh, you know, with Manny Diaz and, and the body of work. And, and Mike Yersich, I thought, was pretty honest in some of the things that they uh, need to do better. Yeah, one of the things about Manny Diaz that really struck me is he talked about the soul of this defense. And that's, you know, sometimes you're in these press conferences and they kind of run together and you're trying to figure out what it, that to me. You know, really, I think it spoke volumes about what this defense is about. And what he was getting at is nobody is posting gigantic numbers, but everybody is okay with that. So if somebody's out on the field and making a big play, other guys are celebrating it and getting into it. And I think that's just huge. I mean, you look at this defense right now, they're five games in. Curtis Jacobs has 18 tackles to lead the team. Yeah. That's a very low number, but 30 guys have two tackles or more. So they're all buying in. And I think Diaz has a really good way of putting things into words. And I just thought that really explained what this defense is all about. And another thing, there's only so many plays to go around for these guys to be making these big plays. And it's just being, the wealth is being spread around. And it's kind of like last year with the sack battle. It wasn't like 2021 when AK had 33% of their sacks with nine and a half on the season where last year is everyone getting involved. 
Yeah. These are unusually small numbers, though, because I mean, but it's what 86 less plays, something yeah, like that. But I mean, still to have the leading tackler at 18. I well, mean, guys don't care, and that's my point. It's right. like, and, and you talk to these guys after the game, and they truly don't. I mean, they're they're focused in on winning, and I think they realize that if this team keeps, if this defense keeps playing at this level, the stats aren't going to matter. People are going to take notice, and, and yeah. these guys are going to go where they need to go eventually. And I mean, another thing is like th that skews the stats for the number of plays. I mean, they only ran like 30 against Iowa. Yeah. Yeah, it's 86 less plays overall, but it's also. When you look at first teamers not getting nearly as much because you've got backups in by the end of each game. But you mentioned the honesty out of Mike Yurcich, and I thought something was really interesting. Um, and I think we've ta I've talked about this with everyone here offset. But when we asked Mike Yurcich about the chemistry issues between quarterback and receiver, I thought what was really interesting was the fact that he only singled singled out receiver issues. He didn't say Drew was missing his marks. He didn't say anything about Drew. He specifically talked about things receivers need to do better. I thought that was really illuminating because they've talked about the receivers really stepping up this year. But when asked specifically about bad chemistry, I felt like he basically said, no, the receivers aren't doing their job yet. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't think he's going to pile on a, uh, a first-year starting quarterback. No. And I think it's been kind of obvious that the receivers in a couple situations have not been at the place that Aller expected them to be. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, you haven't had Trey Wallace for the last three games. I mean, you had him for one game, but he didn't do a whole heck of a lot. But he's been limited. And they've given other guys opportunities, and they haven't, they haven't gotten the job done. Malik McClain, uh, two big drops against Illinois. And then Cephas starts the next two games and has three catches. You know, that you only have three catches across two games that you're starting. And then Amari Evans had that crazy game last game where he had 30 snaps and no targets. They need Harrison Walls, and I know we're getting into, you know, the later parts of the season as we go along, but I think that speaks to the fact that nobody has stepped up and seized that position, and if Harrison Walls is good to go, I think it's going to really benefit them. And another thing, it seems like some guys are also having trouble getting open as well. There's mm -hmm. not creating enough separation. Yeah, I think that's, that's a fair point. Hey, you know, that was one of the big questions coming into the season. Do they have a third receiver? Now, five games in, we're wondering if they have a second or even a lead number one. I think Keandre Lambert-Smith at times has been, but not consistently. And there was a lot of talk preseason. Would it be the tight ends that stepped up in the number three role? But I think the answer for that so far has also been no. No one seems to have really taken ownership. In fact, Singleton was what, the leading receiver? against Northwestern? Yeah. Well, I think that's important, though. I mean, the fact that he's up there but in the top three or four of your receivers, it's adding a different element. I get exactly what you're saying. No, you, you don't want your running back to be the guy. Right. Like, what was it, in, in 88 or something, or 87, I think Blair Thomas led them in, in receiving. So, yeah, you need other people to step up. I would say Keandre Lambert-Smith, you look at what he did against Northwestern, five touches, all of them for first downs. That's four catches. So he's doing what needs to be done. I think we need to see it from some other people. Yeah, I think teams are really keen on him right now, and I think that's been part of the problem. Yeah. Well, the tight ends are blockers. Let's get that straight. These tight ends haven't <laughs> – we, we talked about this last week. The, the tight ends haven't done that quite that well uh, this year either. Second half, this first half of the season, obviously the warm-up half of the season. Now the back half, two big games looming. It's Michigan and Ohio State. I know you don't want to get caught looking at Ohio State, but when we were practice this week, they were blasting the music. Uh, they were definitely prepping for the Buckeyes. Well, you know how you know they were prepping for the Buckeyes. All of the foreign team players were wearing Ohio State's players' corresponding numbers. So you know that they're already, they're not going to admit they're looking ahead. We could look ahead as much as we want. I'm not focusing in on UMass. And I think that's the thing about this team where, you know, I've had some people say, boy, you guys are a little bit critical of this team. Well, we're not measuring this team against Northwestern, and we're not measuring this team against Illinois. That's not what this team is all about, right? We're measuring this team against Ohio State. We're measuring this team against Michigan because if they want to be that team, that's who you have to measure them against even when they are blowing people And up. I think James has let us in a little bit more than he has in the past. You know, after the Northwestern game, he talked about, you know, down the road, he mentioned, and even last night in his availability, he made a point to say, you know what, in college football, you're trying to win them all. And the margin for error is not what it is in the NFL. And, hey, when you talk about them all, you're talking about, you know, two real big games. And we'll see what happens with Maryland.
Yeah, I mean, I think kind of one of the things that you need to factor in also, you know, Manny Diaz even said, you know, during the bye week, that's when you had the opportunity to go and look ahead. A few well, weeks. and also you have the ability to self scout. I mean, that's one of the big things. So when we talk about Drew Aller, he, he actually mentioned this after the Northwestern game, you know, when you're in the grind of a season, in game week, you're looking ahead, looking ahead, looking ahead. One of the good things for everybody on this team, but I think especially with Aller, is they were able to take this week and take a step back and really self-examine and self-scout, not only for what they've done, but for where they're going to ultimately go. You mentioned the measuring stick of who you're measuring against. You also have to remember you're measuring against yourself in that the expectations you set preseason to win a Big Ten championship and maybe make the college football playoff that is ultimately in the early half of the season what you're truly measuring against because that's the only thing you have right now to measure against. When we come back, let's talk more about the offense and defensive standouts from the first five games. We'll have that when Nittany Nation Overtime returns. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. And by McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Back here on Nittany Nation Overtime, Andrew Clay, Mark Brennan, Neil Riddell, Ryan Risky with you on this bye week. Gentlemen, we are self-scouting, as the phrase is of the week, and we are talking about the first five games. Let's talk about the, the players who've stood out. Let's talk about who's everyone's offensive standout of the year. Well, let's just go down the line here. I mean, Drew Aller, I mean, to me, he's the MVP of the team because you can't really, fi you can't really pick one guy on defense to be the overall MVP because it's so balanced. I think he really epitomizes what this team is all about. Uh, Hard-nosed, you know, he's taken some hits and gotten up. He's not made mistakes. He's taken what the de defense has given him. And we all knew going into this season that a lot of what this team was going to be about was on his shoulders. And I think he's delivered. He, there's still room to, grow, to grow. There's still room to improve. But to me, he's my offensive and overall MVP. Yeah, sure. I would, I would be on with that. I mean, and the fact that he just got you started right away against West Virginia showed, you know, what he is capable of, you know, rolling out and throwing the big touchdown pass. I mean, I know it's been their big breakout play of the season and it happened right away. So yeah, I, I would be, um, I agree with Aller. Absolutely, Aller 100%. Except one guy that kind of stood out to me is Keandre because I had some concerns coming in, you know, based on the way he performed last year. Could he handle that number one role? And he's looked great at it at times and sometimes you look like you're looking for a little more except he's kind of the one guy that who's really separated himself from the rest of that receiver group to try to be that security blanket for Aller. There's no need for me to c just repeat what any of you guys said, but I think that's almost concerning that it, it feels very specific to Drew Aller. And, and while Aller's been good, it's not like we're sitting here saying like, oh my God, Drew Aller, Heisman Trophy. Like Aller's been good, but, th but, but it's been nothing greater than that. He has really taken care of the ball. That has certainly um, obviously been what he's done best this year. Defensively, Mark, who do you got? Defensively, Curtis Jacobs. I mean, he's leading the team in tackles. He's had a nose for the ball. He, uh, you know, recovering a couple of fumbles. And just, he's out on the field an awful lot. You know, they're Kobe King, I love what he's doing, but they're taking him off the field in a lot of those specialty packages. And that's leaving Abdul Carter and Curtis Jacobs out there in the nickel, in the prowler. And they're doing a lot of good things. But I think Curtis Jacobs is a leader uh, to me. It's tough on defense, as I said, because it's so spread out. But Curtis Jacobs is, is my guy. Yeah, I, I'd probably... Uh, switching gears here, I'd probably have to take the combination of the defensive ends. I think Chop has played well. Um, you know, the, they put a lot of pressure. Uh, I saw somewhere, uh, you know, Adisa Isaac uh, as well. But, um, you know, I think they put a lot of pressure. Pick on one guy. Like, like Chop Robinson. Right. Like, overall, I think it's like every week it's a different guy who's the one who's really stepping up. Like, I think at the beginning of the Northwestern game, Kobe King was the one who really set the tone. He had a big sack and tackle for loss on those first two drives, one of which started at their, or uh, Northwestern started at their 11-yard line. Right. So, uh, you know, I think it's just someone different every week that's been able to set the tone. And, you, you know, except the one guy I think, you know, you're kind of still waiting to get an interception is Kalen King. Well, they I, don't seem like they're going that way. Yeah, no. and that's not a bad well, thing. It's either. just like Joey Porter mm -hmm. Jr. when they weren't throwing at him. Uh, like Neil, I'm going to cop out here, and I'm going to pick Manny Diaz uh, because I think what he has done this year has just been 
uh, outstanding. And, and Penn State fans, I think you, you want to hold on to Manny Diaz for as long as you can, but I don't think it's – he's going to get another chance to be a head coach in college football again. Uh, it's just – it feels like it's a matter of time at this point. He's going to be able to pick his spot. He's going to be able yeah. to wait for a good spot to open. He is really good. Yeah, it's not like his Miami tenure was a complete failure. There were really good parts about his Miami tenure, and then, you know, there were bad parts about his Miami tenure. Like you said, he's going to get to choose. Uh, most in, uh, surprising player. I'll go first. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to the guy I mentioned before, Kobe King. I mean, I think a lot of us think that he basically shared that position with Elston last year, but Elston started a, oh, every game last year and logged over 120 more snaps. So he was really the guy, and I know he was banged up in the spring, but Kobe King embraced it and, and seized that job. And if you look at the number of snaps, he's, he's way down from the other linebackers, but his numbers are right there in line. In fact, he has as many tackles for loss as Jacobs and Carter have together. So it's not a, you know, a mind-blowing surprise, but I think the way that he's come out and grabbed that Mike linebacker position has surprised me a he little bit. He got tired of hearing about Kalen. Okay, That's so what it came down to. we're talking about a positive surprise. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be. Surprise is surprise is surprise. Well, okay, well... I mean, I was going to throw out Winston because I was surprised. I was surprised that he beat out Ke Keaton Ellis. But, you know, I got to say, I mean, I expected a little bit more from the running backs in general and Singleton in particular. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something, you know, they haven't had that big run that you've been waiting for. And I'd say, to me, kind of the most surprising player, I think, has been Dom DeLuca. He's played in very limited time. He's got a pick six, two forced fumbles. Uh, and three tackles for a loss. Like when he's on the field, he's making plays and he's doing it, you know, like with the starters still out there. I, I'm with Ryan. I think the Dom DeLuca thing is we knew he'd play. Uh, I just don't think we expected this kind of disruption out of Dom DeLuca before the season. Uh, before we get out here on this break, most improved player. Most improved player. Well, I, I, it's kind of, I think it is Kobe King. I mean, I have to go back to him because, again, you're looking at a guy who was a backup last year and what he's done coming over and just taking over uh, that Mike linebacker position. I think he's uh, much better than he was last year. You know what? I'm going to go with, <laughs> I'm going to go with Falcons. Uh, he, <laughs> the body of work, you know, as the season is wore on, I think the uh, kicking appears to be in okay shape. Was he not as good last year as a kicker? I didn't scout him at, uh, <laughs> at Columbia. <laughs> I couldn't get into Columbia, that's for sure. Oh, then, I don't think any of us could. Could any yeah, of us get in Columbia? Or afford it. No. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. Ryan? I like Jalen Reed. I think he's settled into that starting role nice, and he's been able to fill, you know, help fill some of those holes that were left uh, by Joey Porter Jr. and Tig Brown uh, to graduation last year. Yeah, I think you all hit it right on the head. Um, and we are out of time on this block. Anyway, so when we come back, let's talk more about the position group breakdowns. That's when the Nation Overtime returns. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Monarch Cleaners. For all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By REMAX Results Realty Group. Committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry. The answer is always Dorman. And by Star Beverage. No matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one stop beer store. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Well, the storyline we've absolutely beat a lot throughout this season has been the struggles of the running game. We've talked about Catron Allen, we've talked about Dick Singleton throughout the year. This offensive line was supposed to be one of the best in the country. Has it lived up to that hype through five games? Well, I'd say um, the jury is still out. I mean, again, I think we're gonna we, hold you the, down to some answers this week. Well, I mean, hey, you know, they've gone, they've beaten everybody by thirty points for the most part. So, you know, they're doing their share. But are they the road graders, as Joe Nastasi, our buddy, would call them? Uh, I don't know that they've been that. They've protected Aller reasonably well. But I don't think that they've necessarily come out and physically dominated people in the run game. Now, they ran a lot of plays against Iowa, so i got to give them that. Is it better than last year's offensive line? Yeah, I think so. I think without question. I mean, the one thing that I would say is when we went into this season, what was everybody talking about? How was Drew Aller going to handle things? They have not only done a passable job, they have done an outstanding job of protecting Drew Aller. Yeah. Three sacks through five games. I mean, that is really, really good. The other thing I would say in defense of the offensive line is that, especially with Nick Singleton, and we heard this from Yersich this week when he was talking about Singleton and Catron, 
that they kind of have to let the game come to them. They have to, it's like they're thinking too much. There, I think there have been some holes there that both of those guys, especially Singleton, have missed. And when we talk about self-scouting, I think as important as, as this week is for Aller or was for Aller, I think it's really important for Singleton to go and look at tape and see the instances where if he just makes a quick decision and goes, or if he's patient, just the natural instincts. He didn't lose that stuff from last year. So I'm not putting it all on the offensive line. I think a lot of that has to do with the running backs not being Because we saw Trey Potts get in there, and, you know, he just showed decisiveness and, and was able to, you know, whip around and, and, and score. And another thing with the run game, it's like, it feels like the one thing that's just missing is, like, the explosive plays, those long 70-yard runs. Because overall, they're averaging pretty well. I mean, most games, Singleton and Allen have been averaging been between four and five and a half yards per carry. So they're, they're able to grind out the yards. They just don't have those big plays yet. I, I think what's important to remember with the sophomore slump, I think one component that we forget, you, you talk about going too fast. As a sophomore, you're excited. You had a good year last year. Now you're trying to force things. Your decision making makes you process things just quicker and you move quicker because of that. Last year, game is moving a lot faster. You're feeling like your decision making is maybe slower, but maybe sometimes that slower is okay because you're slower at deciding whether or not you're gonna hit the hole or not. You're not, you're not processing things. You're processing, what I'm saying, you're thinking too quickly. Whereas last year, you couldn't think this quickly. You know, I think you made a good point last week with Brenton Strange. They missed Brenton no, Strange block. You all do. but came in here with a chalkboard. To make it. I was ready. <laughs> I was ready to make a cho- take a chalk. But you know, you talk about uh, quick decisions and whatnot. And they said the same thing. James said the same thing this week about Abdul Carter, thinking that you know, with all some of the hype and expectations, they're not less letting the game maybe come to them as much as they but need to. I would also say, in fairness to those guys, I mean, th- we're in a different era of college football. I mean, Neil and I were around when. Kajana Carter, Marco Rivera, you know, that team, that, those freshmen back in 91, all those guys redshirted. Right. That doesn't happen anymore. Now you come out and, and these are still second-year guys. So that's why I think this week is really, was really big for these guys. With those running backs, Jay Wan Sider is a hell of a coach. And I will guarantee you that the stuff that you're saying and that we're saying, he's taken that to another level getting it across to these running backs. Well, you know, you make a great point because some of these guys – stayed for five years and the reality is Aller, Singleton, maybe Allen, who knows? Some of these guys are only going to be here three. No, the days of the five-year senior is, seems pretty well, well pretty well behind uh, Clifford. Us. Yeah, that's <laughs> a little different. Okay, okay. Well, when we come back, we'll wrap up this show. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Don't miss a minute of Nittany Nation Overtime, now also on Apple and Spotify. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Brent Kogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. It's Penn State UMass next week in Happy Valley. Guys, let's not waste too much time talking about this matchup, but we do need to get our picks in. Uh, we already got one from Shane McGregor, who was our guest picker last week. He went with a 50 burger and a shutout. Mark, let's no, start with Neil. Neil, yeah. oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Neil. You got to get uh, foreign territory for Neil winning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, Ryan. Everybody's confused. Uh, I'm gonna say 48 to three. Yeah, I'll squeezing go. him. And Shane's not here, but you squeezed him. <laughs> yeah, I think Penn State's gonna put up some points. I will go uh, 62 to six. Whoa! Wow. 45 10. 45 10. You're giving UMass a lot more credit than I would have. Uh, sorry, UMass. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, no. No slight. Uh, anyways, Penn State Big Ten announced its upcoming schedule. Last topic we'll talk about before we get out of here. Uh, any thoughts about the upcoming Big Ten opponents? The home and away. A lot of travel next year. A lot of far travel. Well, they're going to have a heck of a time picking a whiteout game next year. I know that much. I mean, because you have USC. Uh, who am I missing? And Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio State and Washington. I mean, that, that's like. How do you how are you going to pick welcome the USC out? to the to the Big Ten with a Washington wide out. might be the best of those teams. That's what, but I mean, so I, I don't you know, listen. 
you're looking at these schedules now, and it's kind of mind blowing to see how difficult these schedules are going to be. But that's the new Big Ten, and you know, travel budgets are going to be a little bit more uh, expensive for us. But I love that first uh, home schedule that they're going to have next year. Yeah, it looks to me like you know we focus on the Big Two each year. You know, Ohio State, and Michigan. You're going to have to win three big games a year in order to run the table or to and be one the of them big on the West Coast. Yeah, right. And maybe even more. They're going to be the years that Iowa's still great, the years that Washington, Oregon, all of that. So with that, though, we are out of time. We'll be back here again next week for Nittany Notion Overtime. But for Ryan Risky, Neil Riddell, Mark Brennan, I'm Andrew Clay. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching WTAJ's Nittany Nation Overtime. Tonight's show is brought to you by DeLeo Games, Sisney and O'Donnell, The Student Bookstore, Joel Comfort Toyota, Legends Power Sports, and Belding and Mall. The Nitwits have been brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By DeLeo Games, serving the community since 1945. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we are a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Brent Kogan Electrical Services, lighting the way for you. By NovaCare, Altoona and State College, the power of physical therapy. By Fullington Tours, offering round trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium, from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Harry's Construction. If you can dream it, we can create it. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State. Your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror. Featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.